Hi everyone. I'm super excited to have Dr. Dylan Cutler on today. And we're going to talk about healing PCOS with lifestyle changes. She's from British Columbia. She's a PhD in OBGYN, obstetrics and gynecology. We don't have that kind of PhD here, but what she does is coaching clients who have PCOS about just exactly what I said, their lifestyle, how to eat the way, not just, I don't want to use the word better, but eat in a way that will heal your PCOS. She's written a book. Um, there she is. Let's have her join right now. Hi, Dylan. Thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm doing great. So for those of for those that don't know you, can you just share a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Hold on. I can't see you. Oh, that's okay. You're not missing out much. <laughs> I, I would love to see a real face. It's a beautiful face. Um, let's see. Oh, she left. Let's see if she can join us again. Well, thanks, guys, for live chatting. I promise we're going to get it right. There she is. Here she is. Drum roll, please. Okay, I'm back. Hi, Dylan. Can you see me now? <laughs> I, I can see you. I can't okay. see myself. That's fine. Uh, well, I was going to say you're anyways. Okay. So tell us about yourself. I mean, you know, I introduced you a little bit, but just tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself where people can find you, how they can get your book and all that good stuff. Yeah. So my name is Dr. Dylan Cutler and I obtained my PhD in obstetrics and gynecology with a specialty in PCOS. So I'm all about lifestyle changes for polycystic ovary syndrome. And this is everything from nutrition uh, exercise, mindfulness, meditation, uh, sleep. And I do this uh, through sharing on my, uh, my social media um, over Dr. Dylan Cutler, uh, as well as in person with clients, um, mm -hmm. or I should say virtual via mm -hmm. clients. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a little intro. Yeah. And where are you based? I'm in Victoria, BC, Canada. Great. So what is PCOS? For people who are watching this who don't know what that is, what is it? Yes. So it is a hormonal condition that affects our reproductive, endocrine, and metabolic systems, as well as our mental health. Mm -hmm. And it affects anywhere between 10 to 20% of women, as well as trans men and non-binary folks. Mm -hmm. and, and why are you so, like, why PCOS? I mean, you could have done research in a number of topics and dedicated your life to other things. Why was PCOS so important to you? Totally. It was quite a journey. Um, it started when I was diagnosed when I was 16 and then as well as other people in my family. Um, and it became really clear that there are so many people in the world suffering from PCOS and there's really a lack of research as well as a lack of understanding, um, in the medical field. So I saw a lot of gaps, um, especially when it came to lifestyle management and there's a lot of mismanagement as far as throwing the birth control pill on everyone. Um, without, you know, going deeper into what's going on. So, um, this, so I just felt like there is a huge lack of information out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I see so many patients who come to me and it's very obvious they have PCOS, but people really aren't addressing it and teaching them how to heal it and talk about those strategies that you talk about. If a woman is seeing a doctor and they don't feel like they're really addressing PCOS well, how can she better communicate? And let's say she doesn't have that many options. How can she best communicate with her provider, physician, nurse practitioner about PCOS and what her needs are? Yeah, so there's a lot of things we can do. Um, one thing I recommend is bringing an advocate in with your, um, to your appointment with you. Um, so you can discuss what you want to discuss um, prior with the person that's with you um, because often there's this power imbalance um, within the patient um, with between patient and doctor and we can go in with all these ideas and and we want to put our foot down and say we want this test and this test and then we're in the room and there's this obvious power imbalance and then you think oh um i need to just do what they say so it's good to have someone with you um mm -hmm. also online there's so many resources online um like yourself and myself so making sure that we're going to resources that are um, quality uh, evidence-based resources um highly educated um, in the specific field and to, um, to educate ourselves that way and then um, be able to go advocate more 
confidently when we go to our providers. Perfect. So educate us. If someone has PCOS, what are some strategies, for example, to reduce insulin, glucose, and cortisol? Yes, there's so many things we can do. Um, I would say nutrition is number one. So eating more plants, more fiber, um, and less animal products. This is going to really increase our uh, antioxidant intake, our vitamins, our minerals, um, and our fiber. And then we can also exercise, move our bodies, uh, meditate, mindfulness. These, all these factors are what uh, helps reduce cortisol, um, which is the stress hormone. And then sleep. We need at least seven, eight hours of sleep a night. And people with PCOS actually have opposite circadian rhythms than most people. So if, we're, if you notice that you feel like a night owl, um, then it might be, you know, having to do with PCOS. I know that was the thing for me. So um, putting into place a, a strict nighttime routine where we're off our phones, avoiding that blue light, um, and really taking time for ourselves, whether it's through reading or um, a nice yoga routine, that can really help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are some other ways you can reduce anxiety? I read on your Instagram about CBD. Can you share, you know, your tips as to how to use that? Yeah, so I find CBD so helpful. Um, I was actually on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications for a couple of years through my PhD uh, just to get me through. And I, when I went off them, I transitioned to CBD and it's been really helpful with that transition um, and just having me cope, especially in this pandemic. Um, it's My anxiety has been a lot higher and I think a lot of people are experiencing that. So um, the thing with CBD is, uh, again, going knowing that it's like third party tested, it's a good high quality source. Um, and to start with a low dose um, and work your way up. Um, for me, it's been a lot healthier, I find, than relying on other things like alcohol, which are, <laughs> is also spiking in this pandemic. So um, that's one thing I do for anxiety, um, as well as getting outside. I'm a huge fan of nature. Um, and forest bathing is is real. It really helps us. So um, just being in green spaces can help decrease feelings of anxiety, stress, and this is all going to impact our hormones. Um, when we're have when we have lower stress, lower cortisol, um, we're going to have lower inflammation and lower insulin and androgens. I think I'm cracking myself over here. Did you cracking myself up? Did you just say forest bathing? Yeah, forest bathing. So it's actually a um, Japanese doctors have been using it for ages and we have scientific research that shows that it does um, improve our mental resilience um, and mental strength. So just literally sitting in a forest um, or moving. I personally like moving in a forest, <laughs> like walking. I've never heard that term. I like it. I think I might steal it and use it. Okay. For sure. You should look into it. the research. It's pretty fascinating. And like I said, we're, it's not new. Um, other people have been using it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, another question that I just, I can't help but notice how beautiful your skin is. And we know that women with PCOS, they often have, you know, hard time with, you know, having hair growth in unwanted areas and acne and like, how, what is your regimen? What is your? Totally. Well, yeah. I suffered from acne for a while and I still get hormonal acne, um, which is hormonal is usually like the chin and jaw area also really common when we're wearing masks right now. Mask me is the, the new term um, mm -hmm. for this. So to combat this, um, I use, make sure I'm using clean, safe products. Um, otherwise they're gonna affect our endocrine system. Um, and this is not gonna be addressing the underlying root cause of acne, which is a hormonal imbalance. Um, so I personally use Beauty Canner. Um, they ban over 1800 chemicals. So um, that's something that I can trust. Um, you never <laughs> someone saying you never heard of forest bathing question mark i haven't all i do is spend all this time in my office yeah yeah and then it's not just also skincare but also our hair products our cleaning products um um it all if if we're breathing it in or if we're putting on our body our skin is our largest organ so if we're covering our body in moisturizer we're actually absorbing the chemicals in there and most products are not tested um, and they're not regulated by the FDA. So we have to really look at the ingredients ourselves. Um, and if people want more information on how to do that and what ingredients to look for, definitely contact me um, because I love, I love digging into ingredients and, and finding, uh, finding the, the dirty <laughs> information out there. So I want to just run through some, you know, diet myths. Okay. 
And you have a book. Can you just give us the name of your book again for people who yeah, are it's right now? Cooking with Compassion, and it's an ebook with 30 recipes that are all uh, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, and free of refined sugars. Okay, so myth number one women or people with PCOS should not eat fruit. Complete myth. I eat so much fruit. And that's actually why I named my blog Fruitful Dish, uh, starting with a pH instead of an F, because I was told to restrict fruit um, when I was diagnosed. And fruit uh, is not bad for you. The myth comes from the idea that it's high in sugar, but we're absorbing a lot more than just sugar. We're also intaking vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and it's all packaged in fiber. So this fiber in itself is going to blunt that sh sugar um, spike that we think we're going to get from fruit, but it's totally different than if we were to eat pure sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay, soy. People with PCOS should avoid soy at all costs. You can totally have soy too. So this is another myth because soy contains phytoestrogens, which are confused for estrogens, but they're different. They're way weaker. Um, so they just mimic, slightly mimic estrogen. Um, and studies have actually shown that soy could be beneficial um, for women with PCOS. The only thing is we need to make sure that it's non-GMO and organic, um, like a lot of the foods that we're eating are, are not real foods anymore. So um, non-GMO, organic, things like tofu, tempeh, edamame are amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. I had a bowl of edamame last night. Okay, so the other question, I had one other one. Let me just look at my list before I... Um, so we talked about fruit, we talked about soy. Okay, supplements. I get this question all the time. What are the best supplements people with PCOS should take? Yeah, so that is a tricky one because it's very personalized. And this is what I do with my clients is look at what balances are at play before we start throwing in supplements. Because one, we can waste a lot of money. Um, we can sometimes make it worse if we're using, there's certain supplements, one in particular, Vitex, which um, can is commonly used in PCOS communities, but depending on the type of PCOS, it could make things worse. So, um, so yeah, it has to be individual. There are some that are really helpful. Inositol in general is really helpful for um, decreasing insulin and ov increasing ovulation. Um, so it's kind of similar to metformin, but without the nasty um, abdominal uh, side effects right. of metformin. Yeah, and then. Um, magnesium is another favorite of mine that a lot of people with PCOS are deficient in, um, and it can really increase your relaxation um, and help sleep. So those are, in general, okay for most people, but again, you want to check with your provider or work with someone like me that can really dig into um, what's going on. Okay, cool. So how can someone with PCOS thrive? Mm. Um, first is acceptance, because we must accept that this is a lifelong condition and that it, it can be a blessing because we now have to um, watch out for things like type 2 diabetes and heart disease, heart disease, which a lot of people in the population will end up getting and never had any kind of warning signs. So in a way, PCOS could be a blessing as hard as that is to uh, accept. Um, so to, one is acceptance and then two is to educate ourselves um, through so high quality sources that are evidence based. I love it. Thank you. I'm just going through our feed to see. I think there were a couple of questions that people have asked us. Let me see here. Is coffee good to consume with PCOS? Mm -hmm. That one again is depends on the person. So I myself don't do well with coffee. Uh, it, it makes me extremely anxious um, and it can affect the adrenals. So that's going to depend. There's actually a genetic defect at play that depend that will, you know, if you're someone that gets anxious from coffee, then you might have this genetic defect. Um, whereas some people are totally fine. So I, I usually it depends on the person, but a lot of people do better by switching to matcha um, or herbal teas, um, and just a reduction overall. It's different if you're having three cups a day, then you definitely want to address that. If you're having one cup a day, then that might is probably not um, having any ill effects. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All right. Another question is, is there a link between PCOS and ADD, ADHD? Um, I have not seen that in the research. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. There's certainly a link between other mental health 
conditions, um, which probably are linked to those as well. So maybe a roundabout way, but I'm not aware of a distinct link. Yeah. And what are, and I know you've mentioned it before, but what are, what are some of the mental health issues that women with P or people with PCOS could experience and have? Yes. So higher levels of depression, anxiety, um, eating disorders are more common. Um, I've experienced all of those, um, even panic, um, and suicide actually is seven times more common in people with PCOS. So um, it's quite serious. And I, I wish that it got more attention for those reasons exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for all you do, Dylan. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. And Thanks I hope you'll me. come on back another time and we'll do another okay. live Q&A with you. Okay? Of course. I appreciate okay. all the work you do. Thank oh, you. Thanks, Dylan. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, Dylan. Mm -hmm.